Shalom. First things first, we want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Brachat the Yahweh, Brachat the Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that labor and, and continue on working and that have been set up to hold the truth and to set up to seal men, help seal men that the Lord brings in. Because Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, is, is, he's working. He's the one that's doing all this. And he's he's making it happen. This is his movie. This is his his plans. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Okay, so we're coming to the time of his uh, judgment and deliverance, man, of Israel, Yahshua, the hundred and forty-four thousand and one third of Israel. Okay, I always say keep faith. Now, if you you can see it, man, the birth pains are here. And just like when a baby's about to be born, the contractions come quicker and quicker. Okay, quicker and quicker. So now what do we have now? We have things, prophecies, and, and things that are taking place back to back, quicker and quicker. Okay, so let's get jump right into this article. <clears throat> a brother sent me this. The brother knows who he is if he, if he sees this. And, I mean, it was a, a beautiful article, and it hit on so many scriptures that, the spirit just jumped on me to get some scripts together. I was gonna do a whole nother lesson, but this just this is what the most I wanted to bring out. So Lord willing, by the best of my ability, I hope you brothers are edified and you learned something, man. That to, to, to help strengthen that faith and to show we're about to get out of here, man. This is the article and it says private prisons states you'd better start throwing more people in prison or we'll sue. Okay? Now this article, I found a couple articles from a couple years ago. This is not the first time that the private prison system are threatening or are suing the states for not filling the quota. Okay, so let's read the article. And it says, you know our country is on the wrong track when citizens' freedom becomes bad business, bad for business. And the states are siding with businesses by blocking up more citizens. Several years ago, I wrote about the plague that is called the private prison industry. A lot has chart it says a lot has changed since then, but not from the betterment of the American people. States aren't filling enough beds for the private prison companies, so now taxpayers are being sued by their by, uh, because there aren't enough criminals. These are fearless, fearless lawsuits either. These aren't fearless lawsuits either. Several government agencies knowingly signed contracts with private prison companies that guaranteed a minimum occupancy or quota. In fact, in the public interest has found that nearly two thirds of the kind as funny as that's two thirds <laughs> of the contracts have quota clauses. In California, for example, there is a guarantee of 70% occupancy. In Arizona, nearly 100%. Okay, so that means they say we're going to keep you 70% full through this time, if not 100. Okay? Jump down. It says if crimes it says if crime goes down, which it has been either the taxpayers after the lawsuit or police start arresting people and courts start convicting people of the most petty crimes possible. Judges will also be encouraged to hand down extra long sentences because many of the prison contracts spe specify a certain length of time. There is no evidence that more in incarceration has anything to do with the drop in crime. There is also no evidence that private prisons save taxpayers money. In fact, it's far more likely that they are costing the taxpayers. It says prisoners are, are our forgotten citizens. In fact, it can be argued that even ex-convicts are only partial citizens. Many lose their rights to vote and their right to own a gun. Many are parole or probation lost their fourth and even first amendment rights that that being said at least prisoners in government facilities have enough food the same can't be said for private prisons many prisoners become several 
uh, severely under underfed while in private prisons. Private prisons also provide legalized slavery. Many military supplies are made in private prisons, and the prisoners are paid pennies an hour, money that is put right back into the private company's coffers when it's spent in at the prison commissary. There is a good reason the country has little interest in ending, ending the war on drugs or the war on immigration. Ending those wars would put private prisons out of business. Let's keep reading. Violent crimes are down overall, so does the United States keep prisoner stocks instead? Uh, that's a, I'll post this article, but there's more. Let's post this video right here, and then I'm going to get into some, uh, some, some scripts. Office. So I can refresh this. Make the video play a little smoother. Fortunes, private prisons are waking these idiots. But when more inmates means more cash, it also means overcrowded jails and violence. How do you turn prisoners into profit? Are private prisons a new way of efficient justice? Or are they a breeding ground for crime? Paul Reynolds, former correction officer at the privately owned Lake Erie prison, now activist against the for profit prisons. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you with us. Now, Paul, communities across the United States want to minimize costs and gain more money by handing over control of private prisons to, uh, for their prisons to private companies. How does it happen that more prisoners mean more profit? Well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, when you can have more bodies in a prison, obviously you're going to make more money off of them, uh, cutting costs. Uh, doing anything you can, basically you're, you're treating these people as chattel in, in a way to make profit off of them. But if a bigger prison population means bigger profit, why would anyone want to rehabilitate anybody at all? Uh, they wouldn't, and that's exactly what happened when they took over our prison. A lot of the rehabilitation programs went out the window. Uh, it became a warehouse for inmates, uh, kind of a form of modern day slavery, if you will. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. I guess, why would they want to have more inmates in prisons? Uh, to increase their bottom line. Um, it basically becomes an assembly line form of, of justice. You, you get them into the system, you get them into prisons. Uh, and you warehouse them there, you keep them there, and you charge the state as much as you can for them, and put very little back in return to those inmates. Uh, basically, there is no rehabilitation when it comes to, to privatization like this. But what, if things are as bad as you say, why does the government put trust in private <coughs> prison operators? What's in it for the officials? Uh, I'm sure that they're getting money back. Um, the state is wanting anything they can to save money. Uh, I don't think they did the time to take the research to do this. So for the states to do this, they're trying to put money in their coffers as well. 
And the prison you were working in, Lake Erie, it was purchased by the Correction Corporation of America, a company that owns private prisons for $73 million it was purchased. So how much revenue does it make uh, that it's actually willing to pay that much for a prison? Uh, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure we could look that up and find it. Uh, but uh, they were making a lot of money uh, from what they told us. Uh, once again, that's a question I just don't have the answer for, the numbers. But do you have like a, um, make it an approximate ratio so I, or something? I would say that the with the way they cut programs, I, I would easily have to say their revenue or, or the amount that was uh, spent on those inmates dropped by, uh, as a guesstimate here, I would say a good 30% or more. Because it does sound like it's a profit for the local taxpayers if somebody's willing to pay that much money for a prison. Is it a benefit for the people, do you think? Uh, I, first off, I think the reason they spent that kind of money on the prison is they wanted to make this a flagship. All right, let me get some scripts before this story goes on, and I'm going to switch to another story because you get, you get the gist of it. But this is to show you, man, the Lord has done, the Lord has done this to us because of our, our sins, man. Okay? We're in this predicament of judgment. But now the Lord is redeeming us, and we're in the time of the, how you say, the re reviving of us. The valley of the dry bones are coming back together, but we also have to go and acknowledge the things that we did to, to sit in this position, man. Okay? It's not unrighteous that we're going through this, but let me get this. is Isaiah 42, and we'll start at verse 7. The whole chapter is what I'm going to go through the whole chapter, but I'm going to skip around. And this is Isaiah 42, and verse. we'll start at verse 6. And it says, And the Lord hath called thee in righteousness, and will hold thy hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light, for a light of the Gentiles. And those Gentiles are Israelite foreigners, okay? Don't get it twisted. And it says, To open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Read that again. To bind up the blind eyes. It says to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. So what are we going to do? Let's go into it. This is, the, uh, this is 42 and 7. Let's get some of these words so we get an understanding. And it says to open. Okay. Put quack. Pequak, if I'm saying that right, Pequak. And it says, to open the eyes, open eyes, open ears, to be opened. So how we being how we opening this? It's through the truth, man. Okay, that's how the Most High is going to open our eyes, because what is he opening? Our spiritual eyes, man. Our spiritual ears. So let's go back to the next. It says, the blind... I ver blind blind physically blind okay but this one is actually spiritually blind and to bring out let's get this word to bring out it says yataz yataza yataza it says to go out come out exit go forth to go or come out of forth depart to go forth to, to a place to to go forward proceed to to or towards something so what are we going towards where where we say we're prisoners of hope what are we hoping on the rest the kingdom to be delivered man we're, we're go we're hoping on that and it says to come forth go forth to uh, with purpose or for result See that? What's the result that we're coming? The Lord has set up the men to push forth this truth to help open the eyes and the ears of the blind, the elect that the Lord has set forth to come out of this madness and to have hope, to have rest. Put you in your grave to rest with the scriptures, man. To rest with this truth. That's why it says, Him that wandereth out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So we're getting, we're being woke and we're being alive through this truth and the understanding of it. 
and it says the prisoners let's get that word prisoners Strong's H six sixteen Asir Asir Presinius Lexicon Asir Asir And it says prisoners collective prisoners captive and you just seen that story and who do you see in that? Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. It says, and them that sit, yashab. The word there is yashab. It says, to dwell, remain, sit, abide, to sit, sit down, to be set, remain, stay. What is those prison terms? I just read in the article that the government or the, the privatized prisons has contract clause that you have to remain in there for a certain time. Okay, so these judges are corrupt, man. They're corrupt judges. That's why it says the the whole this whole play the whole head is sick, man. This whole place is corrupt to the core. There is no saving, man. It's just like a a, a, a tooth, man. You know, if you got a, a abscess tooth or something and it's dead to the root, what do you do? You have to get rid of it, man. Or you do things to to help that. Pretty much, you get rid of it, man. Okay, and it says to dwell, have one's abode, to be inhabited, to set place, cause to sit, cause to abide, sit, cause to dwell. And it so says prisoners, uh, prisoners from the prison and them that sit, sit as in, in incarcerated for a long period of time. Because we know your shop, it says to sit. Okay, to be there, to, to be in, what is a prison term? To sit. And you have to sit there in the cell. You might go for an hour. You know, anytime you're locked up, that's what you, you're, you're sitting pretty much. You might do some yard work. And it says, in darkness and out of prison houses. Out of the prison house. Alright, so let me go and read. Now that we have that, let me read this on down. And it says, to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you, tell you of them. So he told us where we were going to sit, man. He told us where we'd be. Let's keep going. Uh, let me jump down to verse 14. It says, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. Because the Most High is getting ready to come and, and, and put in work, man. Yahweh Shimei is getting ready to come and do the real damage, man. This whole, this earth is out of whack, man. Everything is out, out of course. Everything is polluted. It's worse than the time of the of it's the time of the the first the first death, man. We're at that time. Great gross darkness covereth the whole earth, man. Jump to verse twenty one. Verse twenty two, Salakia. It says, But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. Snared is a trap, man. It says, or trap in caves. That's in the middle of the, the middle part. It says, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. It's a good one to look at. We're going to go into some of these words. I don't want to make this too... Oh, it's already getting there, so... Let's go and read this again. And it says, and it says, but this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They they are for a prey and none delivereth, for a spoil and none and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers, did not the Lord, he against, he against whom we have sinned, 
for they would not walk in the ways, neither were they obedient unto his laws. So that's why we're going through the meat grinder, man. We're going through the hardships and the hard times. So let me play this next video. Welcome to The Real News. I'm Eddie Conway from Baltimore. Today in the studio with me, I have a Pulitzer Prize winning author uh, of Days of Destruction and Days of Revolt. Uh, please join me in welcoming Chris Hedges. Thank you, Eddie. Okay. Uh, I have been uh, talking to you earlier about the business of the prison industrial complex and how it's impacting the lives of prisoners and their families. And you shared that you had some experience. Can you share a little bit of that yeah. with me now? Yeah. Well, you know, I've been teaching in prisons in New Jersey for a long time, uh, almost 10 years. And what I've watched over the last decade... And remember, this is a devil telling you this. Probably something you saw when you were incarcerated, is how uh, they increasingly prey on the prisoners and their families to make money. And that uh, occurs by turning commissaries over to private corporations, uh, and because it's a captive market, uh, they can charge anything they want. Uh, so, for instance, uh, we got commissary prices from 1996. We compared them with prices today. And, and we're talking about basic staples, uh, toothpaste. We were talking earlier about noodles. You know, most, what people don't know is most prisoners live on those noodles that they have to heat up. Uh, price increases as high as over 100%, almost everything at least over 50%, and yet what they earn is remain the same. So the minimum wage, I'm talking for eight hours of work, and in many of these prisons we have for-profit corporations exploiting prison labor, uh, the neo-slavery under the 13th Amendment, uh, which permits uh, prisoners to work for far below uh, reasonable wages, um, so their minimum wage is, is $1.30 for eight hours of work, which is roughly $28 a month, but their commissary prices, and we're talking about things that they need, uh, deodorant, toothpaste, have risen by over 100%. Uh, the other way that they exploit uh, the people under the system of mass incarceration is uh, uh, turning phones over to private corporations. So in New Jersey, it's 15 cents a minute, uh, plus the premium that you have to pay in order to put the money on your account. The surcharge tax that the state puts on all commissary items of 10%. So if you have a five cent comb, this is an ac actual example, it costs you six cents. And then the removal of items that people who are, when they were incarcerated, used to get. Jackets, uh, blankets, they used to give you two blankets, now they give you one. Uh, uh, they don't give you thermals anymore. You have to buy them to the commissary, and most importantly, shoes. Well, well, I'm just you know because I personally have experienced that myself in terms of seeing like a, a young guys in the population that uh, just arrived in the last two or three years no longer get the things that we used to get right. when we came in the prison. So I see guys walking around in the dead of the winter without coats and without actually boots still right. running around in summer tennis shoes and stuff why is what's this cutback i thought that the prison industrial complex was making a lot of money why is this happening well because it forces those who are incarcerated to go to the commissary and body items so let's talk about shoes and i don't know what your experience was but this is how it is in new jersey you you're not issued shoes anymore you have to buy them you pay 45 dollars now remember, these people are making $28 a month. Let me get this verse. This is the book of Psalms 107 and verse 10. It says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. And are we not in the shadow of death? The shadow of death is America. That's what David was speaking of. Okay, we're in the shadow of death. You don't know what the hell happen, can happen here. It says, Such as sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound and in, in afflictions and iron." Those are the chains, man. That's the prison. Read it again. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in afflictions and iron, because they rebelled against the words of the Most, uh, most High and contemned and contemned the uh, and contemned the council. And that word contemned. So, like, let me get that. 
despised. So read it again and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. You just hear that he they only get paid a dollar something for 28 days of work, man. Or they get $28, a, they get a dollar a day, dollar thirty-five, dollar fifty a day. It says, Therefore he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of the distress. He, uh, he brought them out of darkness and, and the shadow of death and break their bounds asunder. And that's getting ready to happen again. Okay? This is uh, uh, this is getting ready to happen, man. The Most High is getting ready to take us out of these prison houses and, and, and loose us and bring us to rest. The elect, the 144,000 and the 130, Yasharala. And it says, oh, oh, that men would praise the Lord for for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he that broke the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Mm -hmm. uh, and we haven't even spoken about the fines. So a lot of those people get into the system and they owe thousands of dollars of fines which are chipped out of their monthly salary. Uh, so for instance, one of, my, one of the students that I teach who was incarcerated when he was 14 He's now 39, still owes $6,000 of fines. Um, so they want to buy a pair of Reeboks that cost, if they don't have the $45, and most people don't get 80 plus percent. Okay, this is the book of Jeremiah 50 and 33. This is Jeremiah 50 and 33, and it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast, and they refused to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Mm. Beautiful. This is Isaiah 14 and 17. And it says, this is Isaiah 14 and verse 17, and it says, that uh, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners read it again start at 16 they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and and consider thee saying this is the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms that's what they're going to say to Esau when you when Esau goes down and he's in a pit, man. And it says, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, This is the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all the men, lie in glory, every one in his own house. Because the Lord is gonna, He's gonna put these nations in their own land. But Esau, you getting, you getting, you getting burnt, man. You getting burnt. This is Ze uh, Zephaniah nine and eleven, and I'm gonna close on this. Let me get there. Almost there. Bear with me. This is the book of Zephaniah 9. Oh, this is Salakia. Zechariah, Zechariah, Salakia. This is the book of Zechariah 9 and verse 11. <clears throat> and it says, As for thee also by blood, it says, As for thee also by, by the blood of thy covenant, I have set, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water turn you to the stronghold ye prisoners of hope even to it says even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee when I have bent Judah for me filled the bow with Ephraim and raised up thy sons O Zion against thy sons O Greece and made thee as a sword of a mighty man so that's what we hope man the Lord is going to use us to put judgment on these heathens for the things that they've done. So with that, I'm going to give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Barakatha, Yahweh, Barakatha, Yahweh, Shai.
Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that rule well and that do diligent work. Much love to the elect men that are in this thing and keeping faith. We're almost home. Shalom. Keep faith.